Remote viewing is a perceptual technique whereby a person can describe places, events, or people that are perceived mentally but separated mm. from the viewer by distance, shielding, and even time. Mm -hmm. It's, if you like, it's a, a trained intuitive ability, intuitive ability. How is remote viewing used, um, used today? I've been tasked to uh, help locate murderers and to unravel clues that may help towards finding who the murderer may be in a particular case. Uh, within businesses, helping with negotiations, investigations, uh, lost property, uh, insurance scams, uh, missing persons. Yeah. There's, a, there's quite a long list that I've been involved with all of those. And does your work involve um, sitting in a dark room, say in a police station or something, and um, sort of conjuring up the image of, of the crime scene? No, I sit at home with a cup of coffee yeah. at a table, usually cleared of objects that you know, might get in the way and I just um, focus in on what's called a coordinate, something which is going to help me to find what's called the signal line. Yeah. And then from then, uh, small images appear a bit like uh, bits of a jigsaw, mm -hmm. and eventually we draw up information from that. Some of it's sensory, some of it um, uh, is uh, visual, mm -hmm. some of it is impressions, uh, emotional impressions, and basically feelings that are around the actual site itself and eventually we can come up with enough information that will help to solve the problem or tell us what's actually at that particular site. Okay. Can you give me an example of um, a, a murder case or, or an insurance case where you've sort of conjured something up which um, has, help, has been helpful? Yeah, there was a case in America where a man was found overboard from his boat in suspicious circumstances. I can't really say a great deal about it. Uh, however, there appeared to be no motive for the murder and I was tasked from America through a con contractor out there uh, who's also a remote viewer and uh, I was able to ascertain from the pieces that I could do through remote, through remote viewing that there was a possibility that actually it was an internal affair somebody in the family was actually involved in some way or could be involved in some way mm -hmm. uh, this information was sent back and I gave my reasons for this and I was eventually told that uh, nothing more about what had actually happened with the case apart from someone within the family had, had actually been arrested for the murder. How do the American military uh, use remote viewing? In the military it was used for about 18 years uh, within the, the actual Cold War between Russia and, and the West if you like, East and the West, and um, mainly to sort of locate intelligence things like silos uh, for missiles, uh, secret sites and things like this, mm -hmm. but stuff where um, no other means could actually be used to get into the site to find out what's there. It was only uh, with the event of the, the Cold War that we discovered that Russia actually was operating some people who were able to locate information, in, particularly in the United States. And um, when America found out about it, they thought this actually was quite a good idea. This is a very short view, a uh, very short part of the story, but it sort of brings the, the basic facts together. And from that, um, the CIA became involved and funded um, a military unit, and also some experiments carried out in America by a chap called Hal Putoff. And he worked in, in conjunction with a chap called Ingo Swan, who was a very gifted remote viewer who set up the, uh, the means to train remote viewers at a place called Fort Meade. Uh, during a period of 18 to 20 years, there were about 23 remote viewers. And uh, it was eventually uh, disbanded by, uh, well, by, basically by the government uh, when the CIA started to reveal uh, information about remote viewing and what they've been up to uh, in conjunction with Bill Clinton's um, new disclosure uh, act through Congress that disclosure of information had to be uh, information had to be more freely available to the, the public. Do you have any idea of how many remote viewers there are in the world today? I've no idea in the United States. I have a rough guess that there may be about 30 trained remote viewers in this country, but I could be, I could be at least 10 to 20 out. I, I have 30 that I know of. But it's a lot more popular in America than it is here. Uh, it's a lot more popular in America, I think, possibly because more people make use of remote viewers in America than they do in this country. That's why most of the work that I do comes from the United States. So remote, uh, being a remote viewer is sort of a form of being a psychic. Um, and you don't have to be necessarily a gifted person to be able to do it, do you? 
I don't think that you have to be necessarily gifted or psychic in the way that it's normally used, but uh, I think that it is a trained intuitive ability. Each of us has the ability to uh, remote view. I mean, for example, mothers know when their children are in trouble often, and sometimes I gave an example earlier that the phone rings and for some reason you know exactly who it is on the other end. How we explain that we don't know, but um, remote viewing as we know it today is, is a trained ability to be able to tap into this sort of information when we want it. Is there a, a dark side to remote viewing that would ever deter you from doing the job? Um, there are upsetting uh, places to be. Sometimes you don't know until you get there. Usually I have an idea that uh, if um, a, a coordinate comes in for me to do a particular task and I start to get into it, if I don't like it I'll come out and just send the information that I actually got. Um, I have no intention of making myself feel bad, you know, it's, life's great and I enjoy it very much so um, I just try and keep it as, as happy as possible. So basically if I don't like the look of something I'll come out of it but there are um, possible places to be where you actually don't want to be and as you know from your own experience you do get feelings about places um, as you did with your own tasking. You get a feeling about a place and if you're right immersed in that and fairly well practiced you know that's not a place you want to be, you get out as fast as possible.